Yeah, not the result that you would have wanted, but how do you assess the game as a whole? Yeah, difficult first 15 minutes for us, definitely. Um, we played pretty much a formation now, <laughs> so we didn't play for a long time, but we had um, um, games in pre-season, completely different lineup. Um, Bob in the centre, which helps defensively massive. Um, Oxley on the wing, whatever, these kind of things um, that, 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 that helps as well. And then we had to change um, pretty much after the last session. You could see that we needed time to adapt. Um, when we were a bit more compact, we had our parts of the game. It's, uh, we play here against a super, super, super side. They, they do it extremely well. All the things they do in midfield, how they build up. So we have to re be really spot on. And that in the first 15 minutes, um, we had real problems. And that kills the confidence a little bit, the conviction a little bit for the things we have to do outside. But then concede the goal, score our own goal, 1-1, um, um, one, one, fine. And then, uh, yeah good for half time all okay second half starts yeah that was the first shot or whatever so it was pretty quick that they that they can score the, the, the second goal which was world class from Riyadh but before that we could have done completely different so I liked a lot of things apart from the first 15 minutes but that's fine against City if you have to change then you have to adapt um, the goals we conceded were all completely unnecessary. All when you see the the, the third goal, um, <laughs> so we changed before, and they, not directly before, but um, which gives a bit of a new organization. But now we watch the ball in that moment, and that's not possible. It's like they played a short corner, and then, um, yes, Nate, we all expect him to win that to, to get a, a, bit, a bit of a head of to that header, but. Um, behind him is absolutely nobody apart from two part of two city players. So again, the goals we conceded were completely unnecessary. The rest was a difficult game. I think in a lot of parts for both teams, we had good spells, played good football, could have scored more goals as well. Um, so um, yeah, on a day when you cannot lose at City 3-2 anymore without um, thinking you are a really bad team, then something really wrong. So it's a result we have to live with now, and that's it. Yeah, despite the difficulties that you face, you've mentioned there the players that were missing, you know, a five week break in mind as well. What did you make of the levels that were reached tonight? You know, the speed, the force at which that match was played at? It was good. It was a high intensity game, obviously, from both teams. That's normal. So, how is that? Uh, we played a good, a good game, but not good enough to beat City tonight. And that says something, but not everything. So, that's just how it is when you, you can win against City or we can win against City if we are really on top of our game. We burned tonight um, for different reasons, but then you have to, to take the result. That's what we do. But um, how I said, there's a lot we can we can build on, we can take um, into the next games, and um, that's what we'll do. James Milner, I think I saw he had a little word in your ear, didn't he, before he went off? What can you tell us there? Millie is convinced it's only a little, little, little thing, but he felt something and just wanted to make sure that um, not getting worse. So it's. Um, I felt something hamstring, I don't know. We have to see. Um, all the rest should be fine. Yeah, and um, with the rest, other players coming back, any time scales there? Yeah, Trent was ill, um, like Ox was until yesterday. <laughs> um, who else? Who missed? Oh, Virgil, yes, Virgil trained at, at, at the AXA today. Mm, who is coming back? Pretty much, I think, all the others should be available. Um, okay, apart from the long-term injuries, so that's it. And the only one is not here yet is Ibu. He will come join us next week. Okay. To sum up, then today, despite the result, largely encouraged by what you've seen, and, th and therefore looking forward to returning to Premier League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. We have to. We we, um, we we worked hard. We did good stuff, and I saw a lot of that tonight. It was not not good enough for tonight. But how I said again, it's 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 City and their, their own ground. This will always be an incredibly difficult game. Um, if, we, if we would have found a little bit early into the game, if we wouldn't have been more switched on, especially around the third goal, because um, I think the second goal, yes, we defended the first moment not good, but then it's world class from Riyadh, so the, I accept that. The first goal, yes, should deny the cross, and then it's the Haaland move if you want. Um, defender judge the situation, and a second later, it's a different situation. Haaland is in front of you, because so he just does that very well. Um, so apart from that, um, a lot of things we can build on. That's what we'll do. Okay. Well, commiserations tonight. It's been nice to see you. Thank you. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Congratulations to you, Pep. How do you sum that up tonight? 
Well, after you know, after World Cup and a uh, long time we don't play, I think both teams were incredible, high level intensity. So Liverpool is so difficult. So when they play good, they destroy you. When they are, you pretend you are in control and nothing. They, they, the quality, the transitions they do, they, they create chances, they score a goal. But it was a good game, entertaining game. Uh, a big compliment for the players for the way they play against a team. Otherwise, you don't play in this in this rhythm and and with this uh, courage against them is impossible. You mentioned there with the time that the players have had away and with so many of your players gone, were you almost quite surprised at the levels that were hit out there, the pace at which that game was played? Out? Yeah, definitely. Was I didn't know. It's it's true that the guys can do the came back from the World Cup just one week off or ten days off some of them so they lose a little bit but not much it was more problem for the players to stay here with the staff like holidays and like Erling like uh, like um, Cole like Riyadh so but they, they were brilliant so they were intense and they played really good With Liverpool fighting back twice what were your instructions to John Stones when he came on at 3-2 and to the wider defensive unit at that point? Well, John played incredible well in the World Cup. The rim is good. His mood is exceptional, and Ajo has incredible quality to play in that position in the middle or a little bit right. And um, and yeah, uh, I think help us in the last minutes. Manu was a little bit tired, so because handle Nunez or Salah or this type of players always is so difficult. And after Kevin De Bruyne's disappointment with his World Cup campaign, what do you make of his performance out there tonight? Kevin, when we played this fire inside of him, he has to find himself this fire. What a player. So I don't know. So how many years is Kevin here? Seven, eight years? I think so. so. Eight years here. So many things. He's absolutely a legend. And always I push him to, you know, to find this this fire. Sometimes it's a little bit. I know a lot of games, but in important games where they have this, it's unstoppable. And finally, on the players that also impressed you tonight, Cole Palmer, Rico Lewis, a few of the younger faces. Yeah, just how pleased were you with them? Yeah, of course, what academy. So Cole played the special first half really, really well. And long, long time ago, I didn't see a performance like Rico Lewis. Long, long time ago. So with 17, 18 years old, he has played against Liverpool with the bigger stars up front and the way he played with the ball and without the ball. We were lucky. We were incredibly lucky to have uh, this player for the next decade, I'm pretty sure. So hopefully the club can take him and uh, because he was exceptional. The game he played was exceptional. Well, thank you for your time. Okay. Well done tonight. Thank you. I think going back to near the start of that interview, Jamie, one of the interesting things was after 15 minutes, it could have gone horribly wrong for Liverpool. Yeah, I was fearing what happened to Manchester United here, you know, watching it commentary-wise, because even on that day, it was hard to be too critical of Manchester United. It was just Man City were unbelievable. And I just felt like that in that first 15 minutes. And I felt for some of the young players in midfield uh, for Liverpool. And Jürgen Klopp mentioned the first 15 minutes didn't go that well. But I think when you're a young player, and we, we could both tell you stories in our young career of games we played in, plays we came up against, where you're thinking, that's the level. Mm. This is the level. Now, you're talking about the best in the world in terms of Kevin De Bruyne. But even though it was tough for them for the first 15 minutes to come through it, Cavalio got the goal, builds a little bit of a confidence, they start making passes. And I think that sort of first half would be a game that, as young players, they talk about. <laughs> yeah. Remember that game at Man City, how tough that was. In a few years, and hopefully in a few years, they've you know, established themselves as Liverpool players, they will improve. But we all have games like that where you're thinking, wow. Yeah. And that was it, sitting in that first 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, it felt like that, certainly for the young players. It's weird though, isn't it? It's the thing that you may see the benefit of that game for some of those Liverpool players in, in like five years' time. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's always difficult coming to City, isn't it? Um, Jamie's, you know, alluded to the Man United game, but when City get it right, it's difficult for absolutely anyone. So for the young kids, it was always going to be difficult for them tonight. But... I actually thought at times they did really well. It, the only thing tactically is they didn't drop off and there wasn't pressing, there was pressing and it was only taking one pass to beat the press, which allowed Kevin De Bruyne to, to dominate the game. So I thought tactically they would have sorted that out in the first half, didn't, and unfortunately they got, they got substituted. What you're talking about there is Liverpool are never going to change in terms of how they set up mm. pressing high, high line. But when you're talking about a pitch that size, the quality on the ball. And again, even though it was young players, 
I don't think the strengths are sort of energy and pace when you think of sort of Cavalio, Harvey Elliott, even Thiago in there. So it wasn't the most energetic of midfields that actually stopped Manchester City really. So that's that's been a problem throughout the season. I, I think it was it was difficult for them as well because it was like a basketball game, wasn't it? Do you know what I mean? You know, like the technical players, but they couldn't get control of the game. So there was going from one end to the other. But Man City are better at Liverpool at, at doing that and keeping the ball. So it was it was difficult. For yeah, you. but also the press from Man City was outstanding oh, in that wow. first game. But what in the sort of opening well throughout the game, but watching it when you've got that position and commentary and you can sort of see everyone on the pitch. What we're watching and where these two teams have taken football or the game now and there's there's no inch given. No one changes what they're going to do. So it's it, Liverpool are getting press, but they're gonna play out of it. Or they're trying to play out of it, and vice versa, and that's what these two teams do now. And the real top teams in world football, which they are, to the top managers, that's how football's played, and that was just an uh, an unbelievable game to watch. So, so when when you are sat there, when you're overseeing it like that, and you see a performance like Kevin De Bruyne's tonight, what what are you seeing that means he's back at that level? Immediately, he's got his Manchester City shirt back on that he didn't have for the last month. I mean, I, I'm not surprised what he showed today in a Manchester City shirt. I, I definitely mentioned early on in commentary, it feel, felt like he, he had something to prove. I'm talking about one of the best players, or certainly midfield players, who've ever graced the Premier League, but he felt he had a point to prove. There's no doubt he's had huge criticism on the back of the World Cup. Maybe not here, but I would imagine in Belgium, the press there, talking about his role, even off the pitch as well. But he's just... He, when I'm watching these highlights here, I'm not amazed at what I'm watching here. I'm amazed at what I saw at the World Cup. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not amazing for me. This is what Kevin De Bruyne does. Mm. But watching him in the World Cup, I couldn't believe what I was seeing because it just wasn't him. Because for me, he's been the best player in the Premier League for the last four or five years. That, that's, that's where you'd put him. You'd put him up alongside any midfield player who's ever played in the Premier League. But uh, listen, everyone's fallible. It didn't quite work. Belgium weren't the best, but... He was a long way short of his standards because his standards are world class on a weekly basis. Was it the tempo of international football where you see the game today was more fluid, which allowed him to get into little spaces to create chances for everyone? I think sometimes at the World Cup, when people go with a low block, they couldn't find them spaces. And that's why we've seen a different De Bruyne today. That's maybe a good point, but I think a point, and it doesn't matter what player you're talking about, I would say 99% of every player plays better for the club than they do yeah. at international. But just because of the surroundings, they know exactly what their own manager wants, the link up between him and him and Haaland. Yes, he's played for Belgium a long time, I get that. But very few players match what they do for a club in an international shirt. So he's never going to be the De Bruyne that we see week, out, uh, week in, week out in the Premier League. But it was just he was still short of where he needs to be. And we can't make excuses, by the way, and sort of say that was Belgium's fault or Roberto Martinez's fault. This is one of the best players in world football. Mm. He, he, I'm sure he would be looking at himself and thinking, I was nowhere near my standard, but he's put that to bed. Because he makes that look effortless then, because he's, because, he's, because he's comfortable. Yeah, I mean, the cross he put in, in the first half for Nathan Aki, I mean, it was just below me, I'm looking down, I'm thinking, because you know, once you see that right foot go back, you, <laughs> but you're thinking, there's, there's such a small margin for him to get that, so he's got to beat the first defender's head, who's not close, he's like 30 yards yeah. away. If he overhits it slightly, the second defender's then going to get his head on it. It's just... I, I don't think I've ever seen a player with a right foot in that position. And, and the one who comes to mind is Steven Gerrard, or, or Beckham, maybe. Yeah. But he produces every single time on the money. And then Nathan Aki doesn't score. He gives him another chance second half. He doesn't <laughs> score. You know, it just... He never misses. Sure. I mean, Nathan, it looked like you were feeling it towards the end there. Yeah, uh, we didn't have too much training, so uh, it was a little bit, uh, it was tough in the end, a little bit crampy in there. But uh, now I think everyone fought well um, to see players like, like we had, we, we've been off for a little while and coming in like this and yeah, straight away have the pace like this. I think uh, it was good to see. This is it. There's been many players that have been away, but Riyad, you've been one of the ones that have stayed. And there seems to be a real freshness about the team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like yeah, everyone came back with a with a very good mentality and uh, and ready to start again. I think uh, it was a tough opponent to start with, but we we we've made the job and we were especially uh, second half and after the third goal we 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 kept uh, very good. We was very good defensively and we 
we stopped them to score the third goal, so we're happy, yeah. Yeah, Riyad's mentioned the mentality side of things. I mean, you gave away the lead twice, you got there in the end, but for you personally, Nathan, as well, you've experienced a tough time at that World Cup. So what's it been like adjusting to that and getting through tonight? Uh, yeah, of course. Um, uh, I think it was uh, overall a good experience to, to play the World Cup, but um, yeah, I think after you have a, a few days off and then uh, you have to come back in and different environment, uh, different way of playing. So it's a little bit of uh, adjusting and stuff. And uh, But yeah, I think, as I said before, uh, everyone got through. Uh, well today and yeah, hopefully we carry on like this. Yes, so you are through now to the quarterfinals. You've knocked out the holders in Liverpool. How much of a chance do you have in this competition now? Well, I don't know who's left. Well, I think we beat Chelsea and Liverpool, two, two top teams. We will see, but uh, we're going to take game by game and concentrate on the next Premier League game, which is the most important for us at the moment. Well, we've got the draw coming up next, half past ten on Sky Sports, to so keep an eye out. But for now, congratulations, well done tonight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well played, uh, Manchester City. Were you satisfied with the victory, Nick, from what you yeah, saw? Yeah, I, I thought they had the better of it. If anything, they, they had good opportunities in the first half. They possibly could have given themselves a little bit of advantage, but as Liverpool and Manchester City always do, mm. it's, it goes from end to end. I thought it was a great run out for the pair of them, to be honest with you. Man City, Leeds United away, Liverpool, uh, Villa away, I think that they'll be ready to go with that there. I don't think they trained a lot. From what you just said there, Mahrez, I think they've literally come in yesterday and really, I don't think they've not really done a lot. And I think you could see with the little bits of quality missing from both sides. But they, as expected, they gave us everything really. They, were, they flat out and it was a good training session for them really. Do you get the feeling, Jason, yeah. perhaps maybe it'll take a fortnight just to get back into the swing of things? For both clubs? I think for Everton to settle down, the dust to settle, players finding themselves. I mean, they, they spoke there, didn't they, about cramping up towards the end of the game. Um, and there's no respite now. I mean, the fixtures come thick and fast, don't they? That you know they've got to find their feet pretty quickly. Mm. It's about this time, this time of season. It's about rest as much as as much as getting on the training pitch. You know, recovering, recuperating. Um, you know, the treatment rooms usually packed this time of the year with players getting massages, trying to get the lactic acid out the the legs to go again within two days, and that's how the schedule is. Um, they know that, but obviously we've had a World Cup as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think it was a good exercise for both of them. I agree with Nick. I think they, Man City won it on a split decision, but these games they, they're always defined by a, a moment of magic, aren't they? Usually, mm. and the winning goal was was a bit of magic, to be honest. You say moment of magic. I mean, defensively speaking, at least from the first couple of goals as we go through them now I mean defensively how would you describe yeah but, that's, yeah but that needs to be polished up the same with a lot of other stuff from yeah. both teams you know it mm. wasn't as crisp it wasn't as sharp as what as what we usually see but they don't they overcompensate by just trying to win a game of football they always have done that and there always is chances in the game but probably a little bit more for City and that's probably what Guardiola will look at is why didn't they finish the game off they made it a little bit more hard work but Great ball into the box, not the best of defending from Gomez, and this is what he waits for. He, he's, he's running, he's timing of his runs. Just keep your eye on Gomez here now. He has a little bit of a look going into the box, you'll see, but then he gets his body shaped totally wrong. He knows where he is. Now, all of a sudden, that's a little glance. Now he's waiting for the cross now, Harlan, and Harlan just attacks it, and he doesn't know where he is, so Klopp won't be happy with that. It, this is something which they'll work on the training ground, and that's both teams. Just preparing themselves for the for, for the for when the game started in the Premier League because there was a, there was a lot of it was just a little bit casual a little bit in, in certain situations where they're tightening up on that was naive from Gomez wasn't it yeah considering he's a centre half mm. he should have known better <laughs> the Liverpool get themselves back in it good little passage of play Carvalho probably one of the players guilty of being sloppy I mean Liverpool were very very sloppy in the first half. Um, but they get themselves back into it again. You can point out poor defending. It was good build-up play by Liverpool. Miller involved, just bides his time. Slots the ball out to Carvalho, just hangs on the edge of the box and then slots it into the bottom corner. Liverpool are right back into it. Right back into it. You make a couple of changes at the break and then, well, barely a minute old. But well, it was a carbon half. copy, wasn't it, of the first yes. half? Both yeah. teams had a, had a chance in, in, the first, in the first minute of the first half and then they have a chance in the first minute of the second half and they take it. It's all about the first touch. His first touch is, is amazing. And it's a great ball to him, but the, the first touch just sets everything up. It doesn't get any better than this. 
There you go. Very difficult to defend against that when, when he, he just set it up nicely then. I and mean, how many times you see Mahrez bend it into the far corner? If he doesn't get that touch there, that he won't be able to get the shot off. So it was a great start for City when they came out. Second That's half. top draw. Absolutely. That is top draw to keep the outside of your left foot to come inside, kill it like that, and set yourself up. Fantastic. Mm. Talking about outside of the boot. Oh, Play Chamberlain's top. pass. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. You don't need to just come on as well. Yes. I mean, this is this is fantastic. Okay. He's off, and he Nunes is off. What a ball that is! And once you've got him in a foot race, no one's catching him. He's the, I think he's been timed with the fastest player in the Premier League. And then Salah just checks his run. He does well, Nunes actually. He's missed a few opportunities tonight, big opportunities, but he makes the right choice here. Credit to Salah as well. I mean, the ball has come right at him. He's had to. You'd probably say the same a little bit with Aki there, but it's so Crap. difficult. If you just watch Aki there, as he, soon as you lose sight of him, it's a wonderful pass for him there. And it's as if he's waiting for that space just to run into. Mm. Quick corner hit. It's all about the delivery here now. You see from Kev Kevin O'Brien. There you go, look. But it was a little bit worrying there. Was it? Was he? They were, they were unable to take the, the corner. Two players came out. They're not alive to it. Once you give Kevin De Bruyne this time and space, you see them queuing up on the far post. Aki's there, I think. Mahrez is behind him. So that'll be disappointing there for Liverpool. That's, that's the sloppy. When, Just when we talk about bit. the sloppy, that's sloppy defending. Mm -hmm. That's switching off, not being alive, not being alert. And the annoying thing for me is... Aki had an opportunity in the first half, nearly a carbon copy, should have scored. Mm. Quivine Keller had kept him out. You would never get that situation if Virgil van Dijk was playing, would you? Would you get... Um, well, Virgil's not going to go out for a short corner. The annoying thing for me is mm. the fact they haven't defended the short corner. Yeah. They just switched off. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's, that's, at that level... It's put, I mean, you can see yeah, they're there. still sorting themselves out. Yeah. Yeah, but we're you, 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 you're taught this as kids. This is yeah. the basic stuff which is drummed into you. Then you don't let a short corner. Once you let the short corner happen there, and you've got someone like Kevin De Bruyne, he'll put it. He'll put it right on the penny. The queuing up. The queuing up. Yeah. Mm. And they seem to be all over the place. Then. Mm. You mentioned Darwin Nunes making the right choice in passing to Salah. How guilty should he be that he's probably cost Liverpool a place in the quarterfinals tonight? He'll be annoyed with his performance tonight because he's he's created. Well, the Liverpool have created opportunities to get him in. Listen, his build-up play and his movement, brilliant. Absolutely br brilliant. Holding the line, bending his run, creating the space for himself. Both teams play with a very high line, so his pace is always going to be a threat. But it's the timing. But, again, he's just off there, isn't he? Should hit the target. There again, should hit the target. Mm. Nick was right. This is, I mean, what Man City doing here? What? I mean, that's a ridiculous bit of defending. And the proof's in the pudding that it's a bad bit of defending because Liverpool get in. He should hit the target. This is the and big it, one. And this is the big one, yeah. He has a little look here. <clears throat> Again, it's that Salah moment, isn't it? But from the other side, he has a little look. And Oxley chamberlain can't make up the ground, doesn't get there. He decides to take on the shot and he just... Again, misses the target. Make the keeper work. Yeah, but it looks to me he's looking more to, to see where Oxley chamberlain is. Everything about his game is perfect except for scoring goals, so he needs just to smack, smack a few in, get the season running, start starting the next game off, get the goals, and you feel that they'll come. Because he gets them, he's in there, and he's getting chances. He needs it to turn a little yeah, bit Time to worry when he doesn't. Yeah, when, he does, when, he, when, he, when you're not getting the chances and, you, and you're not doing the right things, you know, that he is doing the right things, he just needs to hit the net and the confidence will come. And, then, and the good thing for him is once he does start scoring, because the games are coming, all of a sudden he started getting into his rhythm then. Mm. Uh, let's get some reaction from the Liverpool camp. Andy Robertson is waiting to talk to us. Well, commiserations to you, Andy. I'm sure having come back into the game twice, that must be really disappointing. Yeah, obviously. Um, you know, we had chances, they had chances. It was quite quite an open game. Um, you know, I'm obviously sure a good game for the neutral, but, you know, obviously we're disappointed to lose the game and be out of the cup. It's, it's really disappointing. First game back, you know, I think you could tell there was tied legs out there in both teams near the end and, and when you're pushing to try and get an equaliser, that doesn't help. So, look, we pushed, we had we had a few good chances, we obviously opened up, they had a few chances, but, yeah, on the whole it was it was a pretty open game, but, you know, these games are, you know, decided on fine margins and, unfortunately, went against us today. With the tired legs that you've mentioned there, did you almost surprise yourself a bit at the pace, the level at which both sides reach throughout that 90 minutes. Yeah, I think look, when uh, you know we come up against City, I think both teams kind of you know always raise a game, and you always can push that wee bit further. So 
obviously like you said first game back and you know a lot of people played the World Cup and things like that and all the emotion that went into that and things so everyone's back um, you know obviously a really difficult game to start off but it'll be good for us in the legs and you know that's what that's a positive we can take but like I said we're disappointed we wanted to start this off with with a win and trying to keep the good form from um, you know before the break but it wasn't meant to be but there's positives to take yeah with the levels that you did reach out there at various points just how disappointing was the nature of the goals I suppose that you conceded yeah disappointing um, you know, every 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 one of them probably could have been stopped. You know, the third goal we've you know done well to block the cross, and then we've just kind of switched off and then go out and press the short corner, which which could have been done. The first two could have been avoided as well. So, look, that's what we have to look at. That's what um, we have to stop. We always have to be switched on. Um, and yeah, you know, the goals are disappointing. We've scored some, you know, two really good goals from our point of view. Had a good, you know, couple of chances that we could have took, but on the whole, um, it was a pretty even game. And, and like I said, um, you know, they took their chances, and you know. We only took two. Yeah, just finally then with those positives that are to be taken, if you look at it, it was a difficult start to the season, but the results you had before the break, is there a feeling after that performance that you can pick up where you left off? Yeah, look, we don't we don't really have time to waste, especially in the league. Um, you know, a really difficult start before the break. We picked up the last couple of results, which were which were really positive, and you know we want to kickstart that. Like I said, there's a positives to just positives to take from tonight, but ultimately ended in defeat, and um, you know we're out the cup, which is obviously disappointing when you want to go for every trophy available for you so but now league, league, the league starts we look forward to Boxing Day it's going to be a really difficult game at Villa um, you know new manager new style of play and you know they've started really well under him so we're expecting a really tough game but we have to be ready we have to you know be back at our best if we want to climb the league and you know that's what we plan to do OK well commiserations tonight thanks for speaking to us thank you very much